Alrighty, five seven patterns for the following x squared plus bx plus c. Yes, I said it. Don't forget about me. All right, the objective to factor quadratic trinomials whose quadratic coefficient is one. This is the quadratic term. Its coefficient is one. For example, here. <coughs> but also a factoring one whose constant term, this constant term, is positive. Notice this is positive. So what are we going to do? We're going to do what we did last time. We're going to make some observations. Let's do our foiling here. Now we can mentally do this. We can mentally distribute here. We know our first term is x squared. Middle term is negative 7x. The last term is plus 12. Over here, what do you notice? When I do my distribution, right, I get x squared plus 3x plus 4x plus 12. We get x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now, let's see. Is there some sort of relationship here between these guys? Do we see any relationship here between um, the number 4 and 3 and, um, and 12? Hmm. <coughs> yes. Look at this. Our constant term is this times this. Our middle term is this plus this. Notice this is a product, this is a sum. The sum of these guys is here, their product is here. Over here, look at The sum, 4 plus 3 is 7, 4 times 3 is 12. Negative 4 and negative 3 is negative 7, negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. Nice! So what we're looking for is some product. Again here, notice the same thing is going to happen here. Ready? Here we go. Let's, let's do it up. Oops, let me move this over a little bit. Here we go. Um, if I do the distribution old school, I get m squared plus 2m plus 6m plus 12. Notice you end up with m squared plus 8m plus 12. Well, what do you notice? 6 times 2 is 12, 6 plus 2 is 8. I have a sum and a product, right? Here, same thing. You get m squared minus 2m minus 6m plus 12. I get m squared minus 8m plus 12. Look at this. The product, negative 2 times negative 6 is this. The sum, negative 2n plus negative 6 is negative 8. So we're looking for, we're going to go in the reverse. We want to go from here to there. We want to start from here and take this trinomial and factor it. Remember, we're factoring. We're going to take this number and write it as a product of two numbers. So that's what we're going to do. Here we go. So what we're doing is we're looking for some product. We're saying, hey, man, what two numbers add up to this but multiply to this? Here's our sum. Here's our product. Right? I'm just a little multiplication sign. Now, I could say, all right, I can start listing. Uh, what numbers add up to 8? Okay, let's look, think of all the pairs that add to 8. I'm going to start writing them down over here. Um, 8 plus 0, um, 7 plus 1, 6 plus 2. 5, 3, 4, and I could go on forever. Five, I could go 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. I could go on forever in this direction, couldn't I? Because 4 plus 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and negative 2, isn't that also? Yeah. And isn't 11 and negative 3? What else? Isn't 1 million and 8? Well, I mean, 1 million and negative. Oh, there's a ton of things that'll add up to this, okay? So let's think of things so we don't look at this. So you know, what are they going to look at this yet? We're going to look at this. There's only a finite number of things that multiply to get 15. Namely, this thing we call u factorization. We find, start with 1, 15, and I say, does 2 go in? No. Does 3? Yes. 5 times does 4 go in? No. 5, I'm back here. There's my u factorization. So I look at these pairs. I have a positive. This is saying the sum of these guys, what of these sums add up to 8? Oh, 3 and 5. I found my magic numbers. The whole name of the game is, hey, can I find these two numbers? I got them. Now what do I do with it? I just go like this, man. Put the three here, five there, boom. I know when I do this out, I end up there. Am I sure? Let's double check. X squared, 15. The middle term is the rainbow. 3x, 5x, yes, 8x. It worked. So I'm looking for some product. I found it. So again, so what you can do is, a method is, you can list all the factors of, this, of the constant term. So 1, 24, right? 2, 12. 3, 8. 4, 6. 5, no. So here they all are. But notice, 
What other numbers uh, multiply to get negative 24? Also, there's other ones. There's negative 1, negative 24. Negative 2, negative 12. Negative 3, negative 8. Negative 4, negative 6. And obviously, we're going to want to use these pairs to get this negative number, but forget about that for now. When you're dealing, check it out, when you're dealing with a, a positive one, you know this, so we're looking for the guys who sum. Ignore the sign for the moment so you can find them. Ignore it. Say, all right, I want to find the numbers that sum to 10. Not those ones. Not those ones. Not, here they are. Those are my numbers. When there's a plus here, I find my sum. Now let's deal with the sign. What's the sign going to be? Bang! Negative, negative. So I need to take the opposite of this guy. Get XX minus 4 minus 6. Do it out, you end up with this. Let's look at another one. What am I going to do? List the factors again. We have 1, 24, 2, 12, 3, 8, 4, 6. Do any of these guys, when added together, equal 11? Yes. 8 and 3. Those are my numbers. 8 and 3. So that's exactly what I'm looking for, and I ended up with the right one. So I'm looking. I First, I list the the factor pairs of 24, and then, because I'm dealing with positive here, um, I'm looking for the sum who is going to be here. And I found it. All right. Sweet. So let's look at another type of problem you might see. This is saying, find all integral values for k for which the trinomial can be factored. <laughs> what are they talking about? Um, well, integral values means integer values. Um, we're trying to figure out what kind of numbers could be in there. Well, there's only a few possible, there's only a finite, there's only a, a handful of them. Um, what are they? Well, they are all the possible sums of the factors of 14. Let's see, 14 is 1 times 14, 2 times 7, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't go in, 5, no, no, 6, no, and then 7. There we are. So it just, we, so we're looking at them right there, that's it. But also, they're opposites too, because a negative times a negative will also equal a positive. So negative 1, negative 14. Negative 2, negative 7. Now, the product's 14. What are the sums? Well, this sum is what? 15. This sum is 9. This sum is negative 15. This sum is negative 9. So the only possible things that can go in here for this to be factorable, or factored, being able to be factored, is plus minus 15 and plus minus 9. Again, let's look at another one. What about for this one? 24. 24 obviously has a lot more options. Because it has 1, 24, 2, 12, 3, 8, 4, and 6. Their sums are equals, equals 10, 11, 14, and 24 and 1, 25. But remember also all the opposites too. So also they're negative. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Cool. Now this guy here is saying something a little bit different. <clears throat> it's funny, all the positive integral factors for k, for k, which the trinomial can be factored. Now we're saying, hey, what can this be? So because this has to be positive, these have to be of the same sign. The only numbers that are the same, these are all the positive. When both numbers are positive, they can equal 6. So I have, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, 1 and 6, 2 and, sorry, there's a 0 and 6. Oh, that wouldn't work because that has to be positive. So 1 and 5, 2 and 4, 3 and 3. Uh, oh, that's it. We have 6. So here they are. Uh, what are the products? The products are, because here are the sums. These are the only three ways I can sum to get 6. So what are the products? 5, 8, and 9. That's what those could be. All right, so now we're going to do some factoring again. We're going to go back, back, back in the saddle again. This is going to be a little bit more difficult, okay? So what I'm going to do is a little thing called substitution. I'm going to let x equal y plus 2. And wherever I see a y plus 2, I'm going to put an x in there so it makes sense to me. Now I'm going to look at this. Ooh, what two numbers multiply to get 5 and add to this? How about, let's factor 5 out. 5 is just 1 and 5. Do those add to 6? Yes. They're both going to have to be negative. So I end up with x minus 1, x minus 5, but remember what x is, x is y plus 2, so it's really y plus 2, which is right here, minus 1, y plus 2 minus 5, which ends up being y plus 1, y minus 3. Kind of tricky, huh? All right, we've got one more here. We're going to do this guy out. What's this going to be? This is going to be r squared. What multiplies to get that? Minus 25 r squared minus 4. Notice these are both factors. Oh, got to go. See ya.